Saturday mornings in the 90s, no school, just cartoons and the clatter of breakfast bowls. People say that these shows were simply advertisements for action figures, commercials for impressionable young minds. But it wasn't just toys that kids of the time craved, we also wanted games for our consoles, and the creators of these shows were, were happy to oblige. So, let's take a look at what happened when our favourite animated characters leaped from the screen onto our home consoles, specifically my favourite, the Sega Mega Drive. Join me as we dive into the games that turned cartoon time into gaming time. First up, Tiny Toon Adventures, Buster's Hidden Treasure. This game was based on the popular Tiny Toons Adventures, which was originally broadcast between 1990 and 1992. The game itself was a treasure trove of platforming fun, capturing the zany spirit of Acme Acres. While the game delivered on laughs, some found the controls a bit more wily Coyote than Bugs Bunny. But did it look like the show? Absolutely, it was as vibrant and lively as a Saturday morning binge. You navigate levels searching for your friends who have been enslaved by Gene Splicer and progress to the next level by locating Go Go Dodo, all whilst the show's theme song blasts out on repeat in a loop. The game received high praise from reviewers at the time, including a 91% from Sega Force magazine. Go down the hole. Toot toot go down the hole. Kitty go down the hole. Kitty bye bye kitty. Next, the Animaniacs, which is based on the cartoon that ran for 99 episodes between 1993 and 98. Yakko, Wacko, and Dot took over the Mega Drive with their trademark chaos. Fans love the slapstick humour translated into gameplay, though some stages could make you feel like you're in one of Brain's overly complex schemes to take over the world. Graphically, it's a thumbs up, capturing the manic energy and sharp wit of the Warner siblings perfectly. And with a game mechanic that enables you to switch between the Warner Brothers and Warner Sister, it allows you to take on the challenges faced on each stage as you look for movie props to collect. The game's a little bit more difficult than Tiny Toons. Despite both games being developed by Konami, they have a very different feel to them. Animaniacs on the Mega Drive received mixed reviews, while the Super Nintendo version was generally panned by critics at the time of its release. Number one sister, dust for Prince. Dr. Wacko, it could be... No, 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 finger Prince. I don't think so. The Flintstones game was based off of the insanely popular cartoon from the 1960s and tried to bring prehistoric family fun to the Mega Drive. While it nailed the cartoon's aesthetic, the gameplay felt as old as the fossils featured in the show. It certainly made your bedrock, with frustration that is, as you inevitably launched your controller across your bedroom and through a tantrum after losing yet another life. The soundtrack's fine, though you would have thought some hard rock music would have been more appropriate for this one. I found the game so annoying that I ended up throwing Fred off of a cliff as I wasn't having the yabba dabba do time I'd been promised at all, and I doubt he was either. There, there's the hand that feeds you. I dare you to bite it. Go on, I dare you, I dare you, bite it. <laughs> Another classic Hanna-Barbera cartoon, Tom and Jerry also received the video game treatment in the 90s with Tom and Jerry Frantic Antics released in 1993. This game was just as frustrating as the Flintstones one that we discussed. You open the game playing as Tom, and I believe that you did get to control Jerry later on, because I couldn't get that far, as I found this game so frustrating. I had to turn it off, I'm sorry, as I know that some people out there will have a lot of nostalgia for this one. But the slippery landings after a jump, which is a pet peeve of mine, was too much. The game looks fine visually, the soundtrack is a mixed bag. 
On the one hand, it is a little annoying, with the sound of clang and bangs blasting out over the chirpy tunes that were so fun it would have had Tom taking a break in his pursuit of Jerry to have a listen. Tasmania first aired in 1991 and it ran until 95. The main character Taz was very appealing to kids of the time as he was feral, dirty and always hungry, much like many of his viewers. This game allowed players to take control of their favourite Tasmanian devil and whiz around the levels, eating just about anything they wanted. While the gameplay could sometimes leave you feeling dizzy, and the visuals might look a tad dated, Taz's character was as lively and as lovable as ever. Me Machines magazine gave it a score of 81 out of 100 overall, and I must say, it is still a lot of fun, even today, so why not give this one a whirl? Sweetie. Soaring into action next, Tailspin offered a high-flying adventure with Baloo and his air cargo business. Based on the 1990 cartoon series of the same name, Tailspin was one of the many Disney games available on the system, and is perhaps as forgotten as the series itself, though I'm sure for anyone who grew up at the time, who may have forgotten the show, the images on screen might provide a grisly reminder. The difficulty of navigating your way around the levels on this one is a bit turbulent, but visually it captured the show's adventurous spirit flawlessly. While playing this one to capture footage for the video, I realised that there was a bit of a trope employed by many of the games in this video, quicksand. But it really makes sense with Tailspin, given the jungle setting. Nice of you to drop in. I didn't realize it was you guys up there. Would have disarmed the traps. Dark, brooding, and humorous. Enough about me, let's talk about the game. The Adventures of Batman and Robin. Based on Batman the Animated Series, it brought Gotham to the Mega Drive in 1995. This game was praised for its faithful adaptation of the animated series style. It's fairly intense compared to some of the other games mentioned in this video, an action platformer with run and gun elements. The Adventures of Batman and Robin is a hugely enjoyable game, albeit a bit of a button masher. Visually it is spectacular and it has a banging soundtrack. If you've not played this one before, give it a go. It's addictive and a lot of fun. The perfect way to lighten up any dark night. You know what they say, a bat in the hand is worth two in the belfry. I guess you're going out on a laugh after all. <laughs> During the 90s, I liked nothing more than the turtles. I like turtles. All right, you're great zombie. And good the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, that is, or the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, as we called them here in the UK. The cartoon series ran from 1987 all the way through to 1996, and the popularity of the franchise meant that gaming fans had lots of options when it came to controlling their favourite turtle. And everyone had their favourite, mine was Mikey. Playing as him always gave me the confidence to come out of my shell and stomp out the Foot Clan. It was sewer good. Hyperstone Heist was a side-scrolling beat-em-up. The game blended sharp combat with the quirky personalities of the turtles, though the pizza power couldn't always save you from the challenging enemies. Of all the games mentioned today, this is my favourite. Hyperstone Heist was gritty, dynamic and totally tubular. Go ahead, plant one on its lips. Actually, I'd rather plant one on its plants! <laughs> there you have it. 
eight classic cartoon adaptations that turned our Mega Drives into Saturday morning arcades. Whether these games were a hit or a miss, they all brought a piece of our favourite shows into the living room or bedroom any time of the week, not just Saturday mornings. What was your favourite cartoon based game? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more nostalgic dives into gaming history. Until next time, stay safe and keep gaming.